Chapter 11 Weapons of Mass Prescription You don't want a sharp-thinking, vibrant, healthy and energetic population that would be much too hard to manipulate and control, so you make them cumulatively none of these things by the use of pharmaceutical drugs. This is a quote by David Icke. Many of us are aware of the lies involved with the Iraq weapons of mass destruction that were never found but how many people are aware of the weapons of mass prescription that are dished out by many doctors to the public on a daily basis. The weapons of mass destruction such as nuclear and chemical weapons are created to inflict mass casualties to a nation's people, armors or both in order to cripple a nation into political or military submission. No country has murdered more innocent people than the United States by the bombing of two Japanese cities during World War II using newly developed atomic bombs. This then begs the question because if a country willingly drops such atrocious murder weapons on another nation then what else could they unleash covertly? If there was a global plan to reduce population numbers in most countries then how would that be achieved? By slowly poisoning the population by exposing them to toxins, heavy metals, hormone-disrupting molecules and nerve toxins. The most covered way to enable this plan would be to introduce them into everyday life because all humans need to eat and drink in order to survive and just to merely exist. Food, liquids care products, medicine. If you examine the contents of what is included in your water and food products and medicines across the United States and around the globe, you discover an assortment of chemicals that many could consider an assault on your own personal temples and could be called personal weapons of mass destruction. Fluoride dumped into water supplies was once an offshoot of the enrichment process of uranium being used in nuclear weapons. What's that got to do with preserving your teeth? Fluoride nowadays is toxic waste from fertilizer manufacturing. What a convenient way to dump toxic chemicals, use it in a false public health program. According to an article at naturalnews.com, Antibacterial soaps derive their properties from chemicals quite similar to the infamous Agent Orange used in the Vietnam War and these products are used by children. I have been and personally seen the photos in Ho Chi Minh's city of the devastation caused to humans by this chemical that was unleashed in the war there. People continue to be slowly poisoned by heavy metals such as mercury in the fillings installed by dentists around the world slowly leaching over the years into the bloodstream of the innocent. You have the slow leaching into food and drinks of both metals and plastic that surround the food and drink products themselves. If you wanted to destroy a nation's people then destroying them via the big pharmaceutical companies is just one of many ways to go about it. Within two generations, your children and your grandchildren, a nation's people, can suffer organ damage, declines in cognitive functions and degenerative disease brought on by the side effects of medication. According to naturalnews.com, antidepressants cause diabetes and obesity. Cancer drugs cause neurological disorders. Some arthritis drugs actually promote arthritis. Virtually all pharmaceuticals cause nutritional deficiencies. Most of them contribute to long-term damage that affects the liver, heart, brain and kidneys. These companies create man-made, synthetic chemical mixes that are not compatible with our bodies. Many pharmaceutical products are even blatant poisons to start with. Blood-thinning drugs which are really rebranded warfarin chemicals are molecularly identical to rat poison. Chemotherapy chemicals are poisons and cancer patients often die from the drug toxins. Sometimes, those that don't die suffer from chemo brain which is a loss of cognitive function. Many populations, particularly the United States, are being targeted in a covert chemical war which just accomplishes a slower result but the same result as dropping bombs in a world war. 
This is being done in order to control the population of the planet and it is also being done by creating increased and widespread infertility in both males and females. Directly involved in the trade are reputable establishment doctors, whose medical training has been designed to teach them to over-medicate the population with powerful and unnecessary chemicals, and patients who blindly accept their diagnosis and prescriptions. This is a quote by Patricia Corey. The number one cause of death in the United States is the so-called treatment. An investigation by the online Consumer Reports highlighted this when it reported that infections, surgical mistakes, and other medical harm contributes to the deaths of 180,000 hospital patients a year. According to projections based on a 2010 report from the Department of Health and Human Services, another 1.4 million are seriously hurt by their hospital care. Those figures only apply to Medicare patients. What happens to other people is less clear because most hospital errors go unreported and hospitals report only on a fraction of things that can go wrong. There's an epidemic of healthcare harm according to Rosemary Gibson, a patient safety advocate and author. More than 2.25 million Americans will probably die from medical harm in this decade, she said. That's like wiping out the entire population of North Dakota, Rhode Island and Vermont combined. Evidence that the American medical system is the leading cause of death and injury in the United States is summed up by Dr. Richard Besser of the CDC. He said that each year approximately 2.2 million U.S. hospital patients experience adverse drug reactions, ADRS, to their prescribed medications. In 1995 he estimated the number of unnecessary antibiotics prescribed annually for viral infections to be 20 million, approximately 7.5 million unnecessary medical and surgery procedures are performed annually in the US and around 8.9 million Americans are hospitalized. The number of deaths induced inadvertently by a physician or surgeon annually in the U.S. is 783,936. By 2011, Americans were taking on average 12 medications a year. These figures are particularly stunning when you consider that according to researchers from the British Medical Journal, they say that 90% of drugs and treatments do not work. They investigated 2,500 of the most used drugs and found that only 12% have any benefit. A report by Save the Children in 2013 showed that more babies die on their first day in the U.S. than in 68 other countries. It said that the United States has the highest first-day death rate in the industrialized world. An estimated 11,300 newborn babies die each year in the U.S. on the day they are born. Prescription drugs kill some 200,000 Americans every year. Will that number go up, now that most clinical trials are conducted overseas, on sick Russians, homeless Poles and slum-dwelling Chinese, in places where regulation is virtually non-existent, the FDA doesn't reach and mistakes can end up in paupers' graves. This is a quote from an article entitled Deadly Medicine in Vanity Fair magazine.